Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have a, the light of life. Um, this is kind of like a little tribute to uh, Hank Hanegraaff, uh, the Bible Answer Man. I absolutely detested him uh, in the 90s. You know, pre-trib rapture, the whole deal, right? But lately, I've noticed he uh, he left whatever demon nomination he was affiliated with and became affiliated with the Orthodox Church. Uh, you have the uh, Eastern Orthodox Church, which is Eastern Europe. You got the Greek Orthodox Church, which is, you could argue that that was the church that Paul founded. Um, and then you had the Russian Orthodox Church. The Orthodox Church has been the most persecuted church in the history of the world. Believe it or not. Yeah. So, this is kind of a tribute to Hank Hanegraaff and the Orthodox Church. Uh, why... Why do the, the churches in the West, why don't we know anything about the Orthodox Church? Well, let me give you the bad things first. Well, the Western Church doesn't want you, and I'm talking about the so-called Protestant churches. They don't want you to know anything about the Orthodox Church. So what do they do? They, they say they smear them and say, oh, well, they're just Catholics. They're the same thing as Rome. Uh, no, they're not. They're not the same thing as Rome. They have a few similarities, and we'll cover that. But then again, some of the Protestant churches do too, believe it or not. Now, let's do the bad things first. The um, Orthodox Church, some of them have like images like statues and stuff like the catholics do there might be some of them that pray to them like praying to saints and what have you but my experience is generally they don't not like the catholics you know they'll bow before a an image and you know a statue of a female and call it mary and pray to it which uh yeah, big no-no. But the but they they generally don't have those things, but they do have what they call icons, which is just a Greek word for image. You know, like a picture. Uh, look on your computer screen. You have lots of images. They actually call those icons. And they'll have a picture of, you know, some guy with a like a halo around his head and they'll, oh that's jesus or this is john the baptist or you know this is paul or this is peter or whatever saint catherine or you know but in times past they had what they called iconoclasts and i hope i'm pronouncing that right but they were people that were the reformers in the greek orthodox church and they would smash the images just smash them. Oh, you want to pray to an image or or uh, adore it? You know, now we're going to put a brick through that window or, you know, stained glass window or whatever. Or tear that image down from the wall, or whether it was like a painting or a whatever. Um, they are guilty of that. What does the Bible say about images? Well, let's take a look at Exodus chapter 20. And God spake all these words, saying, verse 2, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, N-O-T, Thou shalt not make any, uh, not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything 
that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. All right, so I think that settles it. I, I, I you know, it's been a long time since I've read a Catholic Bible. I used to have a Catholic Bible. I had a Duray Reams Catholic Bible. And uh, I think it was worded a little different. I, It's been a long time. I better not use my memory. I'm getting old and, you know, Alzheimer's starting to settle in. You know how that goes. Well, you will when you get in your 60s and 70s, right? All right, now... Uh, there are some Greek Orthodox people that are friendly to the, the Vatican. And everybody will tell you, oh yeah, well, Constantine, he was a pagan and he wanted to merge the pagans with the Christians and blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't know. Maybe one day I need to read the writings of Constantine. You need to be real, real careful when other people are telling you what somebody else believes. You want to know what Chaplain Bob believes? You got to listen to Chaplain Bob. You know? You want to know what Jesus taught? You don't listen to a rabbi. No, you go to the Bible. Now, in John chapter 18, verse 19, now, this is when Jesus is uh, getting ready to be crucified. This is the uh, show trial of the priests, not the Catholic priests, the other priests. Uh, they're having their little trial before they drag him to Pilate and have him crucified. You know, they took him out of a garden. John 18, 19. The high priest then asked uh, Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. So the high priest is saying, oh, tell us what you believe. Verse 20, Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the word. I'm sorry. I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort. And in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I have said. So you want to know what somebody believes? Listen to them. You know? Uh, I want to read something. I want to read what Constantine believed. I mean, he's been maligned so much I'm kind of wondering if maybe he was a true believer I don't know but uh, the Roman Empire was split into two things you had the Eastern Empire and the Western Empire the Western part of the Empire was ruled from Rome and eventually the church split uh, it was Paul that went to Rome, believe it or not. Paul, from what I understand, Paul founded the church at Rome. And of course, it became corrupted, of course, just like all the so-called Protestant churches became corrupted. Do you know the Lutheran church even denies, uh, most of them deny the, the writings of the 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 so-called founder of their church that bears his name, Martin Luther, they actually deny his works now. Well, quit calling yourselves Lutherans if you don't like the works of Luther. I mean, I know why. He wrote a book. Uh, it was called The Jays and Their Lies. 
for a lot of years there, they denied that book even existed. Well, it exists. I've read it. And, um, and then the you-know-whos were condemning the book. Why would you condemn a book that doesn't exist? Yeah. But um, the empire, the Roman Empire became so large that they couldn't control it from one area. I mean, you got to realize back then, uh, a healthy person, 20 miles was about all you could um, travel in a day, you know, on horse or on foot. And, you know, maybe ship was quicker. Uh, for example, in the War of 1812, the uh, from what I remember, the War of 1812 was over. The peace treaty had been signed before the Battle of New Orleans had happened. It took so long for the news to travel that uh, they were still fighting after the peace treaty had been found um, signed. And uh, Andrew... Was it Andrew Jackson, Andrew Johnson? I forget. I get those two mixed up, but he whipped the British behinds. He kicked their rear ends big time. But uh, it took, you know, it would take weeks. I heard it took six weeks to go from England to the United States by ship. And now I can fly to England in one day. I can leave in the morning and be there and have dinner at night, same day. You know, it's like, what, an eight-hour difference or whatever. But, um, so they had to have two different capitals. Well, the eastern capital of the Roman Empire was Constantinople, which they named in honor of uh, Emperor Constantine. And the... Ottoman Muslim Ottoman Turks uh, about I don't know 15 no about a thousand years later or so I don't know the exact dates but uh, they invaded that area which used to be called Greece killed all the Greeks and took it over and then they renamed Constantinople into Istanbul now they call it Turkey they were the Muslim Ottoman Turks, Turkey. They were all Eastern Orthodox Christians. They were wiped out. So that's your little history lesson there. But um, that was the capital of the Eastern part of the Roman Empire for the Eastern Orthodox Church. Now let's take a look at uh, all the churches in Greece that Paul uh, founded. Corinth, perhaps you've heard of the book Corinthians. That was Corinth was uh, churches in the city city state of Corinth in Greece. Galatians, well, Galatians is. Uh, some people say that Galatians was uh, Gaul, which is the old uh, name for France. Others will tell you it was a city in Greece. Then you had Ephesus. That's where the book Ephesians came from. Philippi, Philippians. Colossi, Colossians. Thessalonica, Thessalonians. So all those were uh, Greek-speaking cities in Greece that Paul founded. The Greek Orthodox Church gave us the old, uh, not the Old Testament, but the New Testament. The New Testament is written in Greek. And uh, I've had so-called mess messianic you-know-whos try to tell me, oh no, well, you know, it was translated from Hebrew into Greek. Oh, those anti-Semitic Greeks. I don't believe a word of it. When a Jay tells me it's raining outside, I look out the window to double check and see 
if they're uh, lying. But um, that's just me. I've tested them so often that they've lied so much. I trust nothing, nothing they tell me. I notice they never condemn openly the Babylonian Talmud. And they never condemn the Kabbalah. Never, never, never. I've had them lie to my face and tell me they don't exist. Liars. I know I've read your writings. That's why Jesus called them a bunch of liars. And oh, by the way, according to a Jewish newspaper, guess what the most anti-Semitic country in Europe is? Greece, per their writings. You know why? Because Greece has, percentage-wise, is probably the most Christian country in the world. Now, I don't know what the population of Greece is, but uh, a great majority of their people are Christians. They preserved the New Testament in Greece, uh, in Greek. They were the basis. The King James Bible, uh, the New Testament portion, came from the Greek manuscripts, not the Vatican's. The, uh, there's 5,000 partial manuscripts of the Greek New Testament. Do you know the Vatican manuscripts don't even have the book of Revelation in them? Yes, I know the Catholic Bible has the book of Revelation, but they get that from the Greek church's manuscripts, not theirs. They didn't, uh, they're missing all kinds of stuff. Matter of fact, they've got um, uh, the Vatican manuscripts are called Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. Um, I don't mean to be crude, but do you know how you spell Vaticanus? The last four letters in Vaticanus are A-N-U-S, anus. And then Sinaiticus, the first three letters are S-I-N. I mean, really? Is that just a coincidence or am I reading more into that than I don't know? But uh, I found that interesting. And Sinaiticus uh, was uh, supposedly, what was his name? Simonides. Oh, I forget his name. I bet I got to look it up. Okay, here we go. Constantine Simonides. S I M O N I D E S. Uh, he, he, he was considered the greatest forger in history. He would get an old piece of, um, well, he was not, you know, they didn't have paper back then. So, you know, you had vellum, uh, animal skins and what have you. And he would like erase this, what was on there. You know, maybe it was a cooking recipe and then he would copy, um, something else like Bible stuff and then sell it as an ancient relic and get paid handsomely. The guy was considered the greatest forger that ever lived. I mean, that guy was good and he knew how to make his stuff look old. Uh, but on his deathbed, he was bragging about how he forged the, um, uh, Sinaiticus and made a lot of money. I don't know. Supposedly it was found in a monastery and this and that and the other and I don't know. I, I don't know if it was all, you know. I, I don't know. We won't know until Judgment Day. But uh, the manuscripts of Sinaiticus which is the Vatican's and Vaticanus, the Vatican's manuscripts, they don't even match each other. They're less than 5% or less of the manuscripts available. They do not match each other. They are called the minority text. 
And yet that's what all these modern new Bibles like the NIV and the New American Standard Bible and all these other Vatican-inspired Bibles, that's what they base them on. And they will lie and say, oh, these are the older and better manuscripts. Well, the, the majority text, which is the uh, uh, what they call the Textus Receptus, the received text, the majority text, and they'll lie about that too. Uh, they say, well, they're, they're not as reliable as the older Vatican texts. Well, that's a lie. There's 5,000 of those manuscripts, and they match each other. Those people were very meticulous about copying the words and not making mistakes. And you better believe God's hand was on them to preserve his words. Because if God's hand wasn't on there to preserve his words, then Satan won. And let's face it, if the Bible's corrupted, maybe Jesus is not the Messiah. Maybe we should follow the Jays when their Messiah comes. Yeah, think about it. I mean, you know, that's the logical conclusion of the matter when you think about it. But there's 5,000 manuscripts in Greek. They're all in Greek. I used to teach, uh, because I believe the Jays, the Messianics, that Matthew was originally written in Hebrew and then translated into Greek. I don't believe that anymore. It's a lie. There are no Hebrew New Testament manuscripts. Zero. Zero. They exist nowhere in the world. I've looked. No, I didn't go to the museums, but they don't exist. But there's 5,000 partial ones of Greek. Now, in Matthew 21, and verse 43, Jesus was talking to the you-know-whos. And he said, Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Paul went to where? Greece, Italy. Some people say he also went to uh, England or Scotland or Ireland or whatever. I don't know. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. Uh, there are some legends. I don't know. I, you know, I know for a fact that Paul went to Greece. Thessalonians, Colossians, you know. I mean, that's enough to tell me. Now, why did Paul go to Greece. Why? Well, I believe the answer to why did Paul go to Greece is found in the book of Joel, J-O-E-L, chapter 3, verse 1. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations, my people, and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. Israel was scattered among the nations, people. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Yeah, they were sold into slavery. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? and all the coasts of Palestine. Will ye render me a recompense? A uh, payback, right? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Uh, if you were into Eastern religions, you'd say karma or payback. Verse 5. Because ye have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temple 
my goodly pleasant things. Listen carefully. Now we're talking about they, they invaded and they took the people captive and they sold them into slavery. That's what they're talking about. Verse 6, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border. What? The children also of Judah and the children of Ju Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians. The Greeks. They sold the children of Judah and the children of Jerusalem to the Greeks that you might remove them far from their border. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them, and I will return your recompense upon your own head. There were the children of Judah in Greece. Did you catch that? You won't hear that taught in uh, First Baptist Church. No, uh-uh. No, sure won't. So, the Greek church gave us the New Testament. Now, I was really interested in uh, church history. I did a Bible. Well, actually, I did. Uh, a church gave me a Bible. Uh, I'm sorry. A church gave me a class on church history. And in Bible college, I did a class in church history. I don't remember if it was on the undergrad or graduate level, but I did, you know, read an entire book, actually a couple books on church history. Because like I say, you want to learn about the, the Methodists, you don't go to the Presbyterians. And if you want to learn about the Baptists, you don't go to the Catholics. And uh, when I took a class on the Jehovah's Witnesses, I didn't. I don't want to listen to what the Baptists tell me because I went to a Baptist Bible college. No, I bought the Jehovah's Witness Bible, the New World Order translation. I mean, the New World translation. And I read uh, some of their, I guess, theology books. So, you know, you want to learn, you go to the source. And that's what I did with the Jehovah's Witnesses when I was took a class. I had a, I had a choice between the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, there's more Jehovah's Witnesses down here than Mormons. And besides, I already knew some stuff about the Mormons. So, you know, didn't need to learn more. But that's what you do. You want to learn about Jesus? Don't read the rabbi. Read the words from Jesus. Well, I, you know, was Constantine a heretic? I don't know. But they will try, the, the so-called Protestant church will try to convince you that the Orthodox church is just the same thing as the Catholics. Well, they're not. The Catholics have a pope. The um, Orthodox have kind of a leader but he's not a, really a pope and he's kind of a leader i mean when he says something he doesn't his words do not contradict the bible but the uh, the greek church and greece has been horribly mistreated uh greece and cyprus had what they had uh, had what was called a haircut. No, they didn't go to the barber shop. That's what they called it. On a Friday, the banks closed. You had money in the bank. Let's say you had a business and you had twenty five, I don't know, twenty five thousand dollars in the bank. You're going to do payroll. You you know you're doing payroll, and you're paying your suppliers for the things that you bought, and people are going to pay you. On a Friday, banks close. Monday morning they open. Guess what? You don't have twenty five thousand in the bank anymore. 
you got $17,200. What happened to all the money? Oh, the government decided that you, uh, they, they levied a tax against you. They did this to every single person and business in Greece and Cyprus. And uh, there was no notice at all. Well, not for you little people. Uh, they found out that the big money people, you know, the big money people, well, two to three weeks before the haircut, they transferred their money out of Greece and Cyprus. They weren't affected. They didn't lose any money. You know, they said, well, you know, the government doesn't have enough money, so we got to institute a, uh, a, a tax. And they took, I don't remember what the percentage was, but it might have been um, 25%. You know, might have been 20, it might have been 30%. I don't know. But uh, businesses were complaining that they couldn't, they couldn't meet their payroll. You know, we owe these people money and you, you took all our money out of the bank. Like I said, the big money people, they weren't affected. They transferred their money out of the Greek banks, probably to Switzerland, their little home base. Um, yeah, that's why Switzerland's always been neutral in all wars. Because no matter which side won, they win. The bankers, yeah. Yeah, the bankers didn't lose any money. They transferred their money out. It was gone. Out of Greece when the when they did the haircut. Um, you know, businesses in the United States uh, would get a bailout. Well, they called this a bail-in. You know, oh, the government doesn't have enough money, so you're going to bail in the government. You know, oh, you had $100 in the bank? Well, sorry, you only got 75 now. Sorry, Charlie. Now, I've known some Greek, uh, well, I've known a number, number of Greek people. And let me tell you what. Every time I went to a Greek restaurant or what, met somebody that was uh, Greek, and I'm f somewhat familiar with Greek names, I would always talk the Bible with them. I would always ask them things, you know. I mean, after all, a lot of them, um, no Greek and English. Uh, they can read the New Testament in the original language. And a matter of fact, the Greek Orthodox Church of America was considering doing a updated version of the, the Greek New Testament into English. They were going to do a modern translation from the Greek New Testament into English. And you know what they did? They looked at the King James Bible and they said, you know what? We're not going to do this. We're not going to do a new translation into English. And somebody asked them, well, why not? They said, well, we cannot improve on the King James Bible. If we thought we could improve on it, we would do so. But they said, we, we can't improve on it. It's done, you know, properly. It was done great. And I've had a number of people tell me that. Well, like, it, it's the King James is reliable. Very reliable. It matches. Not so with the Vatican's uh, version of the, you know, Bible. So... You know, it, it's just, like I said, Jewish newspapers said that uh, Greece is the most anti-Semitic country in Europe and possibly the world. What does that tell you? Yeah. Now, the Greek Orthodox Church, they, they uh, suffered more persecution in history than any other church in in the world they have they evangelized eastern europe which all became communist by the way they founded the uh the russian orthodox church was from 
uh, originally came from Greece. You know, they took the Greek Bible and translated it into Russian, and then you had the Russian Orthodox Church. And Stalin murdered millions of them. Millions, like I mentioned earlier. And the Western Church, not a word. But you know why they don't have any fellowship with the Western Church? Why the Greek Orthodox, the Orthodox Church has no fellowship with us? They think the Protestant churches are a bunch of heretics. Heretics. Well, they kind of are. The Greek Orthodox Church, or the Orthodox Church, who reads the Bible in their own original language, can't find the pre-trib rapture anywhere. Nowhere. It exists only in the minds of the Western Church. And I know why it was planted there. And those of you that listen to me for a long time, you know why too. To deceive people. A false prophecy was planted. So that when the false prophecy failed, they can point and say, Jesus was a false apostle. Or a false messiah. I'm sorry. That's what they'll do. See, we... We Jays, we've been telling you Jesus is a false Messiah. We've been telling you for 1,900 years, but you wouldn't believe us. Yeah. Well, our Messiah is here. We're going to build him a temple, probably. That's kind of how I see it. I don't know. Maybe there won't be a temple. I don't know. But personally, my opinion, I think there will be another temple because that would be the ultimate blasphemy against what Jesus did on the cross when he said, it is finished. But I'm telling you people, they don't even know how many millions and millions of Greek Orthodox and Orthodox Christians have been murdered for the faith. Millions of them. And the Western church is like, Oh, don't worry about it. We're not going to be here. We're not going to suffer for our faith. What? What did Jesus say? Well, in Acts 5 and verse 41, the disciples were being persecuted. Why? That for the name of Jesus. It says, And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame, for his name. In Acts 9.16, speaking of Paul, Jesus says, For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Oh, Chaplain Bob, that's the apostles. That's not us. We're the church. Jesus loves the church. We're his bride. And God's not a wife beater. He wouldn't let us suffer and die for our faith, according to the pre trib rapture crowd. I mean, they think the Antichrist are God's chosen people. And if you don't know what an Antichrist is, uh, call the synagogue and ask them if Jesus is the Christ. And when they say, no, absolutely not, well, then you know what an Antichrist is. How about the writings of Paul, Romans 8, verse 17 and 18. And if children then heirs heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Wow. Suffer. Suffer and sufferings. Philippians 1.29, you won't hear this preached in Benny Hinn's church. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. But Chaplain Bob, TBN says that God wants us healthy, wealthy, and, you know, uh, rich. And, you know, we're not going to suffer. God loves us. Oh, really? 
Well, I guess they got a different Christ. I don't know. 1 Thessalonians 3, 4. For verily when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass, and ye know. Uh, does that sound like the stuff that TBN preaches? 2 Timothy 2.12 If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. 2 Timothy 3.12 Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. What? But that's not what Benny Hinn was teaching. Well, yeah, I know, but, you know, Benny Hinn's got a different God than the one of the Bible. What can I tell you? Is Benny Hinn suffering? Oh, yeah, his poor $60 million Learjet is, you know, it's getting old. It needs a new engine. You know, the engine's got too many hours on it. So... Oh, yeah, he's suffering. Oh, but Chaplain Bob, uh, you know, uh, 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 tribulation saints and God's not a wife beater. And I know all the arguments. I went to one of their Bible colleges, which is why I went to one of their Bible colleges. I wanted to learn what they taught so that I could prove them wrong. Liars. Revelation 2.10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation, tribulation's trouble, and ye may have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. The The Orthodox Church has suffered millions of dead people. Communism murdered so many millions, you wouldn't believe. And what did the Western church say when all this was going on a hundred years ago? Almost not a word. Nothing. Yeah, a hundred years ago. This persecution was happening in the life of my father which a few years ago I would have said in the life of my living father, but uh, he has since passed on. But all this persecution was happening in the 1920s and the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s. It started tapering off a little bit in the 70s. But, yeah. Millions. They don't even know how many millions died under communism. They don't even know people. And the Western church dares, dares to call the church that suffered the most persecution in history heretics. Do the, are they perfect? No. Do they have their faults? Absolutely. But at least they don't believe the pre-trib rapture lie. I mean, how many of these people are going to fold when they find out that they got to suffer for their faith, that they might have to die for their faith, how many people are going to deny Jesus to save their skin? Probably millions. Millions. The Greek church knows better. The Orthodox church, they know better. I have a lot of respect for them. A lot. I'm not a member of them. Maybe I, uh, maybe I should check it out. They're they're probably better than uh, they're probably better than most. I don't know. Be honest, I've never been to a Greek Orthodox church. I've talked to a lot of their members, but uh, never been to one. Maybe I should check it out. All I know is the so-called Protestant churches are will tell you they're a bunch of heretics. Well, 
I think they need to look in the mirror with the fingers pointing at themselves, looking at each other in the mirror. Pre-trib rapture. Where's that in the Bible? Show me two clear verses. The Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall everything be established. I might be paraphrasing there, but that's, yeah. What about persecution? Acts 8.1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. Who? Whose death? Uh, Stephen. And at the time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Second Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.4 So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. Wow. Galatians 6.12 As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest... They should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. Oh, yeah. You know, remember something. In Matthew 24 and Mark 13, Jesus said that the man of sin would come, false Christ would come first. The false Christ would come first. But if you listen to the Protestant so-called pre-trib rapture crowd, oh no, Jesus comes first. And then he's going to take us up to heaven while everybody else down on earth is getting slaughtered because God loves his church and he's not a wife beater. He would never let us suffer persecution. Oh no, God would never do that. We're his bride. God loves us. Well, how about 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14? For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, the dead, the dead in Christ, even so them which also sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second here, Chaplain Bob. This is confusing. The pre-trib rapture crowd says that Jesus comes to earth halfway, takes everybody up with him, and then goes back to heaven. Huh? For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which also sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Wait a minute. He, he's going to bring them with him just to go halfway to earth and then go back to heaven? Huh? That don't make no sense. If somebody understands this, please uh, let me know because I can't figure it out. You know, uh, six years of Bible college, uh, I'm confused. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, you know, the dead. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. A shout. You know, every secret pre-trib rapture comes with a shout, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, when you want a secret pre-trib rapture, you got a shout. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. Not Donald. And with the trump of God. Trump is the sound that is made when you blow a trumpet, okay? A trumpet, you know, when you're doing a secret pre-trib rapture, you always blow a trumpet so that everybody hears the noise, right? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now remember, there are seven trumps in the book of Revelation. 
along with the seven vials and the seven um, bowls and the seven trumps. The seventh trump is the last one. And guess where that is? It's at the end of the tribulation. The end, not the beginning. Oh, well, Chaplain Bob, there's a, there's a last trump uh, 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 before the tribulation. Oh, really? Where is that at? The Orthodox think the Protestants, so-called, are a bunch of heretics. They are. They really are. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. You know what? Let me tell you something, people. If a Messiah comes and you're not caught up in the clouds, in the air, it's the wrong Messiah. Read Matthew 24. Jesus said the false Christ would come first. Very important point. Now, I know I've beat that horse to death, but I'm going to beat it some more. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Interesting. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's right. In this sinful flesh, we cannot inherit the kingdom of God. God's got to give us a resurrection. Just like Jesus was resurrected, we have to have a resurrection, a new body. Oh, yeah. A new body where nobody's blind, nobody's deaf, nobody's got cancer, nobody's got arthritis. Nobody's got heart disease. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Verse 51. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, at the last trump, there's seven trumps in the book of Revelation, and the seventh one is the last one. You know, one, two, three, four, five, Six, uh, seven. Which one's the last one? Seven. It's the last one. There's not a last trump, but prior to the tribulation. Pre-tribbers are liars and deceivers. Whether they're doing it knowingly or ignorantly, I don't know. That's something God's going to decide. But let me tell you something. God judges false prophets harshly. I don't know if some of these people are even going to have salvation. I mean, if they're doing this knowingly, I can almost absolutely guarantee you, almost, that they're not going to be in the kingdom. I don't care how many times they preached. God hates false prophets. I could do an entire Bible study on that, just that. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. The Greek church knows there's no pre-trib rapture. They read the Bible in their own language, a lot of them. Not all of them. 
there's Greeks in the United States that speak English that, you know, don't know Greek. But I know, I've known a few, quite a few that have know Greek and English. And they have a lot of respect for the King James Bible. At least the ones that I've talked to. They don't use those Catholic, uh, Catholic Vatican inspired versions. They don't use them. And when the Protestants tell you, well, the, you know, the Orthodox Church is just a branch of the Catholic Vatican, they're lying. They're not. Uh, there's been times in history they didn't even get along at all. They do not recognize the Pope of Rome. The, 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 they don't recognize him. He is not their spiritual father. Their spiritual father is Christ. The Greek Orthodox, there it is. You know, um, I'm hoping that I've been right about uh, all this stuff I've been telling you, but that's generally my assessment. I may not be right about everything 100%. Now, there has been times when the Eastern Orthodox Church has individuals have gotten along with the Pope. Uh, there's been Popes in history that were actually pretty decent. But we haven't had that recently. So, people, I'm telling you, I, and I'm not telling you to join an, a, a Greek Orthodox church if you got one in your area. You might want to check them out, maybe, I don't know. But I'm just telling you. But I was very pleased that Hank Hanegraaff uh, changed his position on the pre-trib rapture and matter of fact, he sounds like he's teaching sound Bible knowledge now. And I, I didn't like him in the 90s. I thought he was another heretic church guy, just like all the rest of them. But uh, I, he's changed my mind. He really has. I don't know if he's still a zombie. Uh, but he's, uh, from what I understand, he's been fighting against dispensational theology. Definitely the pre-trib rapture. And, uh, you know, Orthodox Church may not be perfect, but I'm telling you what, they're a lot closer to Bible truth than anything I've found in the West. And let's face it, people. If John the Baptist showed up, or Jesus for that matter, showed up at an independent Baptist church, and started preaching, clothed in camels or camel skins, they would kick him out. Don't, don't you kid yourself. Oh, how dare this guy come into our church on Sunday wearing that type of apparel? He's disrespecting God and his, the church. I mean, John the Baptist was wearing camel skins. I mean, really? They would kick him out. Guy's not even wearing a, 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 a jacket and a tie. What's wrong with him? He's disrespecting the church and Jesus. Can you imagine Jesus going to a Baptist church and blasting the Pharisees, you know, the Jays? Oh, they would kick him. They'd call the police and have him removed. Oh, we, we exalt Jesus. No, you don't. You bunch of liars. You don't believe. You, there are a lot of things you don't believe about Jesus, Mr. Independent Baptist Churches. Boy, I tell you, they'd kick him out as an anti-Semite so fast your head would spin. I know, because guess what? I've quoted Jesus and had that happen to me. And I'm telling you people, it's only a matter of time before the Bible is illegal in this country. It probably won't happen until after the purge. But uh, it's going to happen. I, I can see it. I don't, I don't claim to be a prophet. You know, but I, I can, there's just some things that 
I, I can see them coming. I What can I tell you? The writing's on the wall, I guess you could say. You know? So, all right. Well, I've been ranting and raving for an hour or so. People, get right with the Lord. This is not the time of history to be lukewarm like the Western Protestant so-called church. I gave up looking for a church 20 years, well, not quite 20, over 15 years ago, I gave up looking for a church. Gave up. Totally gave up. You cannot, you cannot reform Babylon. Impossible. You know, it's sad. You go to a church and you quote Jesus and you're told to leave because of anti-Semitism. You know who they serve. The people that own the mortgage to the church building. Yeah, that's who they serve. So, and like I say, download all my stuff because I am not going to be on the internet forever. So if you want my Bible studies, download them. Link in the description box. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.